shop for us in entrepreneurship. Today she's going to come and talk to you guys about her vision for them. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Ms. Ruby Davidson. Hey. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Can you all hear me? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you step one okay. closer just in case? It is a little loud though. It is a little loud. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm yelling at y'all. You know, like, why you yelling at me? It's like sending a text message in all caps. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but, um, as she stated, I am Ruby Davidson. I am uh, the goddess entrepreneur. I am a, I'm a speaker. I am an energy therapist. And I am the author of my own book series entitled The Goddess Grind. Um, currently, I'm working on the sixth book in the series, but it's basically a series of books that focus on um, sharing with you the path to becoming more in tune with yourself in order to manifest success personally as well as professionally. Um, I've been working with the chakras, it's been well over five years. Uh, the reason I started working with the chakras is because years ago, when I was working, um, I was dealing with depression. Um, I, saw a therapist, the second time I had to take time off work, I actually opted for medication, which I really wasn't comfortable with, but it's, it has a purpose. But after that whole thing and relocating to a different state and still going through it, I was like, that didn't help. So I needed to find something that resonated with me that really helped me. And once I came across the chakras and how to balance them and learning all about that, then that's where I finally was able to, I like to tell myself, I cured myself from my depression because I don't deal with it. I know how to effectively manage my feelings and my emotions. And knowing where I am now and how that has helped me as a full-time entrepreneur, you know, like, I know I'm not the only entrepreneur that's dealing with stuff like that. And that's something that we have to start to address more when it comes to mental and emotional wellness and starting a business and owning a business. So... That's how I got into the chakras. That's how I got into what I'm doing now. And with me being all about the energy and dealing with energy in the room, what I want everybody to do, we're gonna do a quick breathing exercise. So before we get started, we're gonna take three deep breaths. I love the number three, so that's why I'm using three. <laughs> but what we're gonna do, we're gonna take three breaths in. Um, once we breathe in, we're going to hold it for a few seconds and then we're going to release it. For the first breath, when we breathe in, we're going to breathe in success and we're going to hold it and just basically allow that feeling to take over every, every single cell in our body and then we're going to breathe out fear. The second breath, we're going to breathe in motivation, let that sit and, you know, go everywhere within our bodies to every single cell. And then we're going to breathe out procrastination. And then the third breath, we are going to breathe in willpower. And the reason I chose willpower is because once you create your vision board, you have to basically come up with your plan of action and stick to it. We, it's easy for us to be empowered and motivated and want to do this, but when it comes to actually uh, planning it out and actually following it through, that's kind of where we kind of fall. So we want to breathe in willpower and breathe out the will to give up. <clears throat> so I want everybody to sit comfortable. Make sure you're comfortable, your back is straight and everything. So we're going to take this first breath in. So everybody breathe in success. Ah. Y'all can say ah. It's okay. <laughs> and just feel it. Now breathe out fear. Next breath, breathe in motivation. Ah, it's okay, y'all can breathe it in and speak and say something. Now breathe out procrastination. And the last breath, we're gonna breathe in willpower. Take a good deep breath. Ah, in, hard And then breathe out the will to give up. So how are you all feeling right now? Thank you for responding. This is interactive. It's okay to respond. But you want to 
sit and I start worrying about if what I'm doing is okay for the night, start putting off what I what I set out to do, I keep on putting it off. So that's why I prefer. Okay, so with you quitting procrastination and you knowing that you're doing that, what are you going to start doing to change that? My business. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay, so you gonna share something? Yes. Time management for self care. Yes, that is important. That is very much important. Not just personal self care, but also professional self care. And the difference between the two is when you take your personal self care, you're like, you know what? I need a break from my personal life. I need to go do what I need to do. But with professional self-care, you need to take time and just really appreciate the things that you've accomplished in your business and the things that you've achieved in your business. Like, you know what? Let me pat myself on the back because I could have been somewhere all over somebody else's business. <laughs> and I took the time to say to mind my own. So you know what? I'm just going to you know do a little extra for me as a professional. And sometimes that professional self-care can be uh, professional development, uh, you know, a course or a class, or if you wanted to buy a book and read it, then definitely do that. Um, does anybody else want to share? Yes, ma'am. Perfectionism. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, perfectionism. Why do you want to, I'm, I'm assuming that you're always pushing to be perfect at everything that you're doing, and you're like, is this good enough? Is this, no, this is not good enough. I got to keep working. And then sometimes it makes me wait longer than when I, if I would have just did it when I first thought of it, started, instead of trying to make it perfect, I mm -hmm. would have been further ahead. Right. And that's why I feel it's important that in addition to our regular vision boards, we should start doing reverse vision boards. Or even just, you know, even if it's not a whole vision board, just a little piece of paper, a post-it, or reminder of something because I don't want it to overshadow what your bigger vision is or what your goal is. Um, now, pretty much the way your reverse vision board will work with your regular one, like I said, um, if you want to make it all pretty and glittery and cut out the little pictures and, you know, make it nice for you, then that's completely fine. But I still recommend making it smaller so, does it, so it doesn't overshadow what your goal is, put it next to where your vision board is. Because you know the more you see it, then it's, it's always, it, it always serves as a reminder, a visual reminder. But on your way and say, you know what, I'm not going to do this today because I'm going to accomplish this. <laughs> so then on your way out the door, you know what, this is what I'm going to accomplish here. This is my reminder, don't do this today, don't do that, and go out the door. Even if you want to put a little reminder in your phone, take a picture, take it with you. When you get in the car and you're like, you know what, I don't feel like doing it, pull it out. Is this on my list? It's not on my list. Let me add. Because whatever you write down today, trust me, it's probably some more stuff that's going to come up that you don't want to put on the list. And it's okay to add to the list as you come up with different things that you realize are keeping you from accomplishing whatever that goal is for the year. And can I get the time? I want to talk to you. It's 148 now. Okay. And last thing, I'm assuming this, I mean, Mr. Andre. Okay. So, he gonna talk next. <laughs> but the last thing that I'm gonna touch on is going, kind of gonna segue him, you know, into what he's gonna talk about. But, um, I also want you all to consider the idea of a vision journal. And a vision journal is pretty much a notebook just like this, uh, where you basically decorate it similar to what you decorate your vision board. But in this journal, you put down your step-by-step -step plan on how you're going to achieve whatever it is that you put on your vision board. And our next speaker. Can you pass the journal around? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But you can decorate it how you want to. Just go, you know, to the dollar store, buy your little journal, notebook. You can get you some glue, put some glitter on there, you put some stickers on there, um, put you a picture. But with the journal, like I said, it's the place for you to write down your step-by-step -step plan to achieving whatever it is that you put on your vision board. And 